Hey everybody, this is the Lone Angler Podcast. Yeah, I'm back. I was on a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, I have excuses, but how about reasons? How do you feel about the uh, the current socioeconomic uh, climate in America? I think hamburgers and cheeseburgers work well with fries. That's right. Uh, October 19th, I was in Tennessee until the 27th of October. I was uh, staying with my daughter down there, which was pretty damn cool. Now, I thought maybe, maybe I would be able to get her to do a little podcast, you know, just kind of record it on my phone because eh, actually the recording application on an iPhone is pretty outstanding. It would have been a little bit different, but I could not convince her of that. She likes to have like all the fancy microphones and headphones and be at the table of chaos. But uh, yeah, so it is, it's been a while. And then I get back from that on Wednesday, the 27th. I worked on Thursday, Friday, had me traveling down to Minneapolis for the second annual Smackdown Outdoors virtual ice fishing show. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, that was cool. That was cool. We, uh, we were able to do it out of Thorn Brothers, out of their rod shop, which thank you to Thorn Brothers. That was uh, that was pretty cool. Last year, we did it out of Doug's basement, our first year, and uh, that worked out all right. But this was had a little more space, and we had some vendors stop in, which was really, really, really cool. I really enjoyed that. Uh, we're already making plans for next year, and we're going to keep this thing going. We're going to keep that virtual ice fishing show going. We're getting a lot of great response from, you know, companies like Clam and Glacier and Thorn Brothers and and all the vendors who partake in it. They really, really enjoy that format. And it's a good way to get information out to people uh, in one fallow swoop, if you will. There has been some other developments here at the Lone Anglers table. That's right. Uh, we're going to uh, welcome a new sponsor of the podcast. Uh, the Lone Angler is now being supported by Della Bay Rods. That's right. Nate and Sam over at Della Bay, we've been chatting. Uh, I think it would be a good fit. So we've been chatting here in their... Uh, yeah, they're going to sponsor the podcast here for a little while, which I'm really excited about. I like I like being a part of small business. You know, Della Bay, they've they've got quite the name. They've grown quite a bit and but they're still just two dudes just grinding out in a basement, which if you follow them on their Instagram, which they're very very active on, uh, they're moving out of the basement and moving into a shop. Yeah, it's uh, and then I think Sam Sam is gonna go full time. Now that takes a lot of balls, you know, to give up the nine to five to pour all that time into your passion and hope that it works. So I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Della Bray makes outstanding ice rods, not only ice but open water rods too, and they even make fly rods. Yeah, which, you know, if you've been listening to the Lone Angler podcast, fly fishing's kind of my thing now. <laughs> and and so much so that the weekend that we were doing the virtual ice show down there at Thorn Brothers, the other half of the store is called the Fly Angler. And that's where I spent 99% of my time when it was break time between blocks, between four-hour blocks. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I I don't know if I bothered the guys working there, but you know, I'm a newbie and I'm totally cool with that, but I also come with a lot of questions, but they were happy to help me out. They were very happy to help me out. Walked out of there with like $125 worth of, uh, fly tie-in materials and a little bit more knowledge. And then uh, I wa- and versus zero. I did not buy any any ice fishing gear, which you know I have a lot of stuff. I really didn't need anything right off right off the top of my head. 
Um, but uh, that brings me to another point. And I made this decision. Uh, it's been actually, I've been working on making this decision for a while now. And I finally decided that it was time. And I shot an email over to Eskimo and I, I resigned from their pro staff. Yeah. And it's not their fault. It, uh, great company. Uh, I speak highly of the company. I speak highly of each individual person on their promotional staff. Uh, their engineering department is top notch. They make top notch equipment. I, I'm going to continue to use Eskimo stuff because it's just, it's, it's some of the finest stuff out there on the ice right now. It's well thought out. It's well built. The reason I decided to step away from the promotional side of things with Eskimo was, was a personal reason. Um, I just, man, you know, as it's getting colder and colder, I'm getting actually grumpier and grumpier. Now, I'm not saying I'm quitting ice fishing, not at all, but I think the days of going out when it's, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 below zero are over. Matter of fact, I told Crafty if the temperature with the wind is negative 11, I'm going to be tying flies. My heart is just not in it. And maybe I just need a break from it for a little bit. Maybe I need a break from it for just a season, you know, and, and just uh, get out and maybe, you know, punch punch a few holes here and there, but not every weekend, not every, every day. Uh, maybe I just need to step back from it for a little bit. That's kind of my thought process. And if I can't uh, fulfill my obligations that, that Eskimo is wanting from me, then... To be fair to them and to be fair to myself, it's just time to, excuse me, step away. It is what it is. I had a great time. I was with those guys for several years. You know, it, it started with uh, fish addictions. You know, I was with them for several years and they're a, a big part of El Vascomo. And when I left fish addictions, I had, I just, I sat out for a year and then uh, I came, I came back into it. And I, and I did that for a few more years and it was great times and stuff, but, uh, I just, my heart's just not in, in at a hundred percent like it used to be. I, matter of fact, uh, as I'm recording this or just before I hit record, I was sitting down swapping hooks on my, on my pan fish spoons, getting rid of them nasty ass treble hooks, putting on legitimate large eye single hooks, barbless too. I've kind of learned a little bit about barbless hooks, especially from the fly fishing world. And it's, yeah, it's easier to take them out of the fish. It's a little bit easier on the fish. Um, but I think most importantly, it's safer for you. I've had treble hooks buried in my hands and it sucks. And with that stupid barb on there, it sucks even more. So, yeah, why not? It's just, uh, that's just something that I was doing, but... You know, I'm still messing with, with ice fishing gear. Matter of fact, I got myself a new Aquaview Micro Revolution Pro. Uh, I've had had underwater cameras before, and they're one of those pieces of equipment that, oh, yeah, you know, I use it for, you know, two, three times, and then I, the first time I forget to charge it, that's where it sits, and I'll sit there. This time around, it's going to be a little bit different because I was showing uh, Ellen over FaceTime my new toy and she's super excited and I think that'll be something fun for us to take out in the flow tubes in the summer so definitely going to get its use you know I've, I've sat and I've organized all my ice fishing rods kind of got those straightened out matter of fact I got the ice fishing bag like ready to go I got both Vexlars up and charging one's charged one is on the charger right now swapped out the batteries gonna run the amped 12 amp hour batteries uh, power boxes are ready to go, all that kind of stuff. I mean, like, I'm ready to go, and I am excited for first ice. Well, the first four or five inches, I usually wait till then. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, but uh, I just, uh, I think I need to take a little bit of a chill, and that's okay. I'm still going to get some new rods from Della Bay. Uh, I've got those all picked out. Going to order those up, 
get that money to them. Get some. And I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, use some uh, panfish rods from those guys. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. But you know, it, like I said, to wrap it all up, the days of, of Patrick going out there and you know breaking shit and freezing his hands and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> probably probably over. That's that's all that's been going on this 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 fall so far. The flow tube is put away. That's put away for the year. Got her all cleaned up and folded up and organized. I kind of like doing the fall, fall, early winter deep clean of the goblin's den. You know, I'm finding shit that I've been looking for for months. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. It is Minnesota deer opener too. And I was just chatting with <laughs> old Doug, Doug Glimmerveen. That's right. He's, uh, He's up up in the Northland here hunting, doesn't matter where, but I, I, I shot him a little message, you know, it's dark, and uh, I said, how's the hunt? He said, it sucks. Saw a wolf about 30 yards away, and uh, <laughs> of course, you know, being the dudes that we are, I said, well, where's the sunset pick? He said, I'm so bad, I forgot to do that. I said, ha, ha, ha. Uh, and then I went on to say something. I'm just being a clown, right? Uh, it's not about being outside in nature. It's about killing. That's a fact. He sent a funny gif. And I said, no shame in the kill, man. I go to the grocery store for food, not the experience. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit to unpack there with that statement. I mean, for real. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. You know, the three weeks of deer season in Minnesota, there's there's memories to be made. There's time at the shack, hanging out with buddies that maybe you only get to see one time a year. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's about it's about killing a deer yeah, and making it into jerky and sausage. I mean, for real. And there's no shame in that. There's no shame in saying, you know, yeah, I go deer hunting to kill deer because that's what I want to do that's all right sometimes I go fishing to kill fish because I want to eat them sometimes I don't most of the time I don't pretty lazy when it comes to the old fillet knife not a lot of miles well shouldn't say that there hasn't been a lot of miles put on the fillet knife in like the last 10 years but uh, there are times where I want to just go kill fish and that usually happens when I go to Lake of the Woods for some reason. I don't know. Once in a great while here, I'll take home some panfish. Dale, if you're listening, some of those nine, nine and a half inchers hit the frying pan with a heavy, heavy thud. But you know the backstory about why I'm taking those ones. But yeah, there's no shame in saying, hey, I'm just out here to kill. I'm just out here to kill a deer. Nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Yeah, that's right. Just like everybody else, I'm going to throw my opinion out there every once in a while. Uh, but I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you've, if you you know, when you listen to this, I hope you had a great opening of deer season. Uh, I got to stop saying, you know, that's another thing I got to stop doing. I know what it is there. I said it again. Oh, man, I'm on fire tonight. I'm on fire tonight. Lone Angler's got some merch coming. Well, not really merch. Well, yeah, I guess so. We got... We got stickers and then something else, something a little bit different, not socks, not craziness. And this isn't expensive, but there'll be one way to get it. And that's through buymeacoffee.com. $5, $5 is going to get you some stuff, some cool stuff. Okay. Maybe some stickers, maybe some buttons, maybe both. That's it. $5 maximum. Boom. That's going to cover shipping and everything. Buymeacoffee.com. Just look for the Lone Angler podcast on there. I may drop a link on my socials. That'd be uh, Instagram and maybe Facebook. Facebook. The other thing the Lone Angler is working on in the background here is an official website. Kind of wanting to, and I've been wanting to do this for a few years, kind of drift away from the old ye old Facebook and just have the Instagram. I know that they're owned by Facebook and it's, you know, not the, the political side of Facebook that I want to get away from really. 
It's uh, just I just want to get away from it. I mean, people are being their algorithm, their their machinery is like putting people in this Facebook jail for very strange reasons and whatnot. But I would like to create a website where I can do some like, you know, vlog type stuff, upload some pictures, uh, maybe even try to figure out how to do some live stuff on there from, for this, uh, just a place, uh, a place for the lone angler community to go to, to find information and, and drop comments and all that kind of stuff. Cause I control the algorithm, me, not a computer. You see what I'm saying? But here's the catch. I don't know jack shit about websites or building them. I'm either using Wix. I'm kind of looking at Wix and Squarespace for just starters. You know, I, I'm the kind of guy, hey, I'm not afraid to try something. But, you know, I start in the shallow end of the pool first. I don't just do, as the kids say, the full scent. I've done that too many times and barely made it out alive. I'm old now. I've learned. Start at the shallow end of the pool, especially with the unknown. And so, so yeah, that's in the back burner. Um, what else is going on from the Bemidji area? It's starting to get cold. I have a pretty good idea of where I want to go fish first ice. Uh, that first five, four to six inches of ice or whatever. I got a pretty good idea of what I want to do there. I am looking forward to burbot season. That, that's always, the weather has a tendency to do a little bit of an upswing, starts to do a little bit of an upswing. Now, last year we ran into, uh, I don't know, like 55 or 57 below zero with the wind and we were crafty and I were going to do some ice camp and stuff, but thank God I was able to talk him out of it, but we had a blast. So we're already chatting about that. We're going to do some burbot fishing and whatnot. Um, everything's ready to go. I kind of did the the uh, the smart thing, the thing that I learned from Matt Brewer many, many years ago. When you put your ice fishing gear away in the spring, put it away in such a, a fashion that it's ready to go come fall. And yeah, I've pretty much did that last spring and everything seems to be ready to go. Except for my jigs, you know, I got some... I had to kind of reorganize those because I use I use ice fishing jigs um, all year round a lot of times. So just had to kind of go through and, and restock, if you will. Plus, I've got some jigs that I'm making on the fly tying bench there that will find their way into my box. So I might have to get a new box. But other than that, everything's ready to go. Uh, I change line every, I don't know, couple of years, even mono. So I'm good online. Yeah, I do have to change some out. I'm getting rid of that clam three pound line. Great line, but it's yellow and I have psychological issues with it. I think, uh, well, I know Crafty Owl fished me and I, ha I think it's a lot of it has to do with uh, my line color. Fishing super clear, clear bodies of water up here. I think it does affect and, and, may and maybe it's all in my head. But uh, I can't get it out of my head, so I'm just going to change out the line. You know, I've been using uh, Berkeley Micro Ice 3 Pound, not a sponsor, for many, many years. I've got great confidence in it. Thought I'd try something new, and it didn't work out as planned. So, hey, we're going to change back. No harm, no foul, right? Whew. Man, it's been a while since I've done this. So if this podcast is a little bit all over the map forgive me until i get back in my flow we're gonna just do a little bit of a pause as i take a drink here and collect my thoughts <sighs> yeah that's never going away it's just water and meal energy drink <laughs> yeah that's exactly what it is um what else was what else have i been up to not much man just pretty much chilling out like I said, I want to thank everybody that, that tuned in to the virtual ice fishing show. Uh, it was awesome. I mean, it just, it gets, it gets better and better. Well, it gets better and better. Yeah. So we've done it twice. So it got better. 
and uh, really looking forward to next year. Like I said, Doug and I have already been chatting about stuff. Doug, Doug's a maniac. Doug is, he's got a five-year plan. I've got a one-year plan. But, you know, we work well together. And it's really cool to have that partnership and uh, with Doug and Dale, both. All three of us, we bring three different perspectives. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a really, really fun time. And uh, I really enjoy a lot of the feedback from the people who watch and uh, from the from the people who uh, come on the show and our sponsors and stuff, which is, man, it just kind of leaves me speechless. Um, speaking of sponsors, uh, we need to do uh, some thank yous here to some others that support the Lone Angler podcast. That'd be Ridgetop Outdoors, right? Located right here in Bemidji on 71 South and the intersection of Highway 2 that runs east and west. That's right. If you're coming up from the, the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, there chances are that you are coming up Highway 71 from 10, Highway 10, you know, cruising on up 64 or cutting through Brainerd on 371 on to 200 on to 71. Man, and if you forgot something or you need to pick something up, Ridge Top Doors is right there on your way right before you get into Bemidji. So swing in there. Tell them the Lone Angler sent you awesome shop like to thank panfish pursuers p3 plastics man those guys they were on the virtual show they're pushing plastic all like crazy right now and uh you know same great profiles as last year i think they're i think they announced if i remember correctly and i have it written down on my ipad but i don't have my ipad here but they upsize the uh, micro cyclo a little bit so they have two sizes of that now. In that micro cyclo, if you don't know what that is, go to their website, p-3plastics.com, and check it out. It's really cool little plastic. It's one of those ones that you you can add to uh, your jig and then add another plastic. You can you can basically kind of like Legos. You can build your kind of build your own profile with it. It's really kind of a neat, really kind of a neat deal. So. Yeah, and when you head over to their website and you place an order, use the code SPUG15 for 15% off your order. Get that order in because those guys, like I said, they're pushing Plastisol. They got hit hard at the uh, at, during the uh, virtual show, which is good. But just remember, guys, they are three dudes. They all work uh, full-time jobs. And uh, not all of them can be in the shop at the same time, but when they do, the magic really happens. But uh, a lot of times it's just one or two of them, and they do the best they can to push that stuff out. Just be patient with them. And also just be patient in general. We covered this quite a bit on the virtual ice show uh, with shipping constraints and stuff. uh, Companies getting product in and getting it to retailers. Um, one of the biggest things that I was saying on the virtual show, and I'll say it here is if there's some product that you really, really want and you can't find it, go to your local retailer that that carries it. If they don't have it, you can probably pre-order it. If you pre-order it, you will get it. You will get your product. And that's a, a good way to for surely get your product. And uh, things are, they're, they're working hard at getting their products in here into the retailers and stuff. So just be patient, hang tight. You know, we've got, we've got a few weeks yet before the ice gets here. And, and if your product isn't here by the time the ice gets here, it's not the end of the world. Just hang tight. It'll be here shortly. Oh man. So with that being said, I know it's a short one. But I've got some, I've got some good guests coming up here, and uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. Thank you all for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate it. I'm back. We're gonna start doing regular uploads here, you know, Monday and at least Thursday or Friday morning. Uh, but I just had to take a little bit of a break and take care of some stuff and hang out with my daughter. And but I appreciate all the downloads and listens and the feedbacks, the emails, the messages. It's fantastic, Sean Cox. You're my hero. There you go. There's a shout out for you, buddy. 
Uh, forklift driving man. <laughs> uh, I used to do that. I used to build those things, buddy. I used to build forklifts. But uh, anyway, I hope this uh, all finds you well. And uh, we'll talk to you on the next one. Bye. Bye.